Ik zal nu aan die kandidaten wat in mij voorgesteld wordt, die betrokken ihre doktersgraden verleen. I'll now confer on the candidates who are presented to me the respective honorary doctorates. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you Monique Nzanza Baganwa with a request that you confer on her the degree Doctor of Commerce Honoris Causa. The decision by Council and Senate to award her this degree has been taken on grounds of the following considerations. Truly committed to a better society, Dr. Monique Nzanza Baganwa was instrumental in the remarkable economic turnaround in Rwanda while serving as a cabinet minister. Helped build world-class state institutions and has been guiding African women to find their economic voice. At that stage, a lecturer with two economics degrees from the University of Rwanda, Dr. Nzaza Baganwa, arrived in the Boerland in 2000 for the master's program in economics at Stellenbosch University. Despite the language barrier, she graduated cum laude and top of her class in 2002. Shortly after her return to resume lecturing, this brilliant scholar's life took a surprising turn when at the age of 32, she was appointed Minister of Economic Planning. Undaunted, she initiated Rwanda's economic development and poverty alleviation strategy and drafted the first regulatory framework for microfinance. She also helped establish the National Institute of Statistics, which is today on par with those of countries such as South Africa. Upon her promotion to Minister of Trade and Industry, she started advocating for more balanced, less agriculturally dominated Rwandese economy. She lowered business costs, created the first free economic zone, and campaigned for consumer rights and the safeguarding of intellectual property. Statistics and rankings attest to a positive impact. By 2011, Rwanda had gone from 143rd to 45th, 45th most business-friendly economy globally. Since 2000, the economy has grown by an average of 9%. All Rwandese have benefited from lower inflation, greater income equality, and lower poverty levels. The World Economic Forum recently ranked Rwanda first in Africa and 17th worldwide in terms of institutional quality. Yet, Dr. Nzanza Baganwa, a mother of three, also found time to complete a PhD at Stellenbosch University. A dissertation on how private sector businesses dealt with uncertainty in post-genocide Rwanda was a striking example of research with beneficial social impact. She graduated in 2012, shortly after appointment as Deputy Governor of the Rwandese National Bank. In this capacity, she has already launched the implementation of the Basel III Financial Regulation Project and led the drafting of a code of conduct for the Rwandese insurance industry. A firm believer in women's key, in the women's key role in African economic development, Dr. Nzaza Banganwa currently serves in the Africa Advisory Board for the non-governmental organization Women's World Banking. She also heads up New Faces, New Voices, founded by Mrs. Grasha Michelle with the aim of expanding women's financial influence. In addition, she belongs to the African Leadership Network and Aspen Global Leadership Network and is a fellow of the African Leadership Initiative and Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I therefore request that you confer the degree Doctor of Commerce Honoris Causa on Monique Nzaza Baganwa for a role in developing academically sound economic policies for Rwanda, thereby improving her compatriots' quality of life, for a contribution in creating world-class state institutions, and for activism to establish women as key players in the African economy. She is a paragon of scholarship with social impact, with Stellenbosch University also, which Stellenbosch University also pursues, with a positive impact on a country and continent at a young age. She has proven the immense power of knowledge. I, I hereby confer on you, Dr. Monique Nazanza Baganwa, the degree Doctor of Commerce Honoris Causa.
Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Honorary Dr. Andi, Members of Council, Vice-Rectors, Deans, Members of Senate, PhD graduates and your supervisors, distinguished guests. There is a special park in the economist's heaven reserved for professors of monetary economics who have somehow contributed to the training of at least one central bank governor. <laughs> I am very happy to say that on account of the reflected glory of Dr. Monique and Sanza Baganwa, you can one day look for me there on a bench <laughs> next to Professor Thomas Kibagu, currently the Chief Economist of the National Bank of Rwanda, who is here with us today, and Professor Andri Skunbi from the Department of Economics. And we share the pleasure to have guided at some point Monique in her academic formation. And what a pleasure it was. Monique was a star pupil in high school already and went on to get her first two degrees at the university in Rwanda with distinction. Of course, the university wisely appointed her as a lecturer, but they also gave her an opportunity to come to Stellenbosch. And by some good fortune, both Monique and her husband, Theogene, a great sociologist himself, came to Stellenbosch in 2000. It was not easy at the start. Monique studied in her third language, and I remember her being very reserved in class initially. She and Theogene also had a young family, but she persevered and then thrived and ended at the top of her class, passing her degree with distinction, as well as receiving the prize for the best master's student in economics, later to be followed by her PhD. You have already heard about her major achievements, even at such a young age, as a minister, a central bank governor, and prominent leader. But let me say something about the decisions behind these achievements. Contrary to an alarming trend of our age, Monique does not believe in alternative facts or in sidestepping responsibility. When she founded the National Institute of Statistics in Rwanda, it was not to cover up uncomfortable truths, but to make sure that the governors cannot hide from them. When you speak to her about her decisions as a minister and as a deputy governor, she emphasizes continuously accountability and clear leadership, which allows also for the emergence of responsible citizenship. Some economic policy decisions are inherently tough given their short-term and even long-term consequences for communities, and, that, and the fact that they run contrary to some popular prejudices. Monique has taken and implemented such decisions, especially with respect to trade and industrial policy, and taken them with remarkable success, because she has always insisted that the overarching policy must be an inclusive policy framework and that the consequences for individuals and for families must not be forgotten. Your country has benefited tremendously from your role as a minister, as a central bank governor, and as an economist. Monique, we are honored by our association with you. We look to you as an example of a scholar and a leader with tremendously beneficial impact. And we tell our students about you to inspire them. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise and raise your glasses to toast Honorary Doctor of Commerce, Dr. Monique Nsanza Baganwa, Kubuzima Buaku Monique. Honorable Rector and Vice Chancellor, Professor Wim de Villiers and Catherine de Villiers, fellow members of Stellenbosch University Fraternity. Good afternoon. Um, 17 years ago, in February 2000, a newly wed young lady landed in South Africa, precisely in Stellenbosch. Um, she was part of a cohort of 20 students who were sent by the National University of Rwanda that time under the government of Rwanda, government of South Africa, 
scholarship program. This measure was one of the many bold measures Rwanda has consistently taken to empower its core resources people. And that young lady was Monique. Our English was really very limited, but it improved steadily at the beat of the resilience and the spirit of determination that characterize my country and its people. Rwanda that once qualified for a failed state has managed to rise out of the genocide ashes and prosper. At an occasion like this, I feel very humbled by the honor that my university bestows on me. The council may have had its own reasons to decide so, but my take is only my country, my principal and mentor, President Paul Kagame, who took the risk to entrust a fresh Stellenbosch master's graduate with three key portfolio I have served to date, and indeed this university that I love so much, only these deserve, deserve a crown. I therefore thank you, Honorable Rector and Vice Chancellor, all the members of the council, the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences, my lecturers, including the late Professor Philip Black, who is no more, who, is, who was my supervisor for both masters and PhD, and all the friends that we, my husband, children, and I have made in this land, who are represented here by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Yuri Gusen, and um, all other people that I have met here and who have really helped us a lot. So I thank you all for your immense contribution to who I am today. I dedicate this honorary doctorate of commerce to those who aspire and work hard to make Africa and Africans reach their full economic potential. Um, before I close, I wish to thank Professor Stan Duplessis, who is my professor, but also my church fellow and a friend for the toast that you have just moved in my honor. So may I also propose a toast? <laughs> to the excellent collaboration between our two countries in general, and between the University of Stellenbosch and the National Bank of Rwanda in particular. May God bless us all. Cheers.